Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be doing another unboxing. Now we have two boxes in this unboxing. We have five models in those two boxes. We have four of the brand new NG models releases in this one. And then in this box here, we have a Gemini Jets model. Now this Gemini Jets model is a model that I have wanted for a very, very long time. And I do finally have it. I got a really, really good deal on it. And with that being said, I think we're actually gonna start with this box here. Save the uh, NG ones for last. I'm gonna put these off to the side now. As you can probably see over here, I am still recovering from the whole collection video ordeal. Um, after I do one of those videos, it takes ages to put all the aircraft back into their correct places. So that's gonna take a while. Um, I'll eventually get around to that, but I've cleared this area so we can do this unboxing in relative, in a relative amount of space. But unboxing this aircraft now, um, as I said, this I got a really good deal on this one. This model was 27 pounds, which is insanely cheap for a model this rare. Um, that's cheap for a regular model anyway. Um, I remember the days when models were about 27, 25 pounds um, as an average, but now they're kind of upwards of 40, 45 pounds, and they're getting pretty ridiculous at this point. Okay, and I have successfully opened this box, as you can see. Um, this model, as I said, I got a really, really good deal on this. Um, I got this model for 27 pounds, which is insanely cheap for this rare of a model. And as well, 27 pounds is cheap for any model anyway. So this model being pretty rare, that's kind of a bonus on top of it being 27 pounds. But we have the Gemini Jets 2014 release. Delta A319. As many of you know, I've been after this model for a very, very long time. Um, I've wanted a Delta A319 for so long. As well as that, I'd love to get the American A319 from this year as well. I believe it was this year or around this year. I would love to get at least one of them as well. But for now, we have the Delta A319. I'm very, very hyped that I now have this. As I said, 27 pounds for this model. That is an absolute steal. But I can go ahead now and take off the uh, bubble wrap to reveal the model in all of its glory. Okay, and taking a look at the box now, as you can see, the box does have a bit of wear and tear around the edges. Um, it's not too bad though, considering it was 27 pounds and from 2014. We do have the colored Gemini Jets logo in the top left-hand corner there. Um, so it's obviously not a super old model. Uh, basically any model pre-2010 uh, had a white Gemini Jets logo. Uh, so you can tell it's a relatively new-ish model. Uh, the new era, I guess you could say, of Gemini Jets. This was their, this was their kind of peak, I would say. 2013 and 2014 is probably the best years of Gemini Jets, in my opinion, at least. Uh, then down here we've got Delta A319, the clip out of the aircraft, this kind of red accent along the edge there. Uh, the sides of the box, we've just got more of the same thing. We've got the Gemini Jets logo, the clip art A319 on the top, all of this, addable collectible model. Then on the back here, we've got pretty much what we get nowadays. We've got the uh, aircraft here, uh, the clip out of the aircraft, the Gemini Jets logo, as real as it gets, all the legal information down there and without further ado I guess we're just going to go ahead and open the model. Taking the model out of the box now we have the uh, uh, traditional toilet paper as a uh, protective kind of sheet and taking the top off of the cradle we have the model here in all of its glory. Wow we even have the plastic piece on the top there that's one of the older plastic pieces from Gemini Jets models and everything seems to be absolutely perfect. Okay so taking a closer look at the model now it isn't in perfect perfect condition there is a little bit of kind of wear and tear on the model right here as you can see uh, a few scratches but honestly I'm I'm not going to complain about this um, I've wanted this model for so long the fact that this was 27 quid I would have honestly I would have paid upwards of 80 pounds for this model just considering how rare this is and how much I really need this model so considering I can get this model for 27 pounds and all it comes with this little kind of scratch along there honestly I'm not going to complain about that one bit Delta currently operates 57 of these aircraft um, and they operate to uh, both Washington Dallas Washington Reagan and Baltimore. They operate flights from all three of those airports to Detroit and Minneapolis with the added destination of Seattle from uh, Washington Dallas. Taking a look at this model now, you can see at the front here we've got the uh, classic A319 uh, nose done very well. Proportions look very good. We've got the cockpit windows there, the L1 door with the Sky Team logo there, uh, Delta titles up here, 
windows of course uh, the landing gear as you can see it's not in the best of shapes however I, I still do prefer honestly I prefer these to the uh, rolling landing gear uh, when done kind of right some of the landing gear we're getting like from the United A319 I have to admit it is pretty good um, but overall I don't mind non rolling landing gear I know it does look a bit botchy here um, but honestly it's not that bad in my opinion moving to the slightly rear side of the aircraft here we've got the uh, engines here the main landing gear the wing piece here uh, the one emergency exit one of the ways of course probably not for us aviation enthusiasts we can probably tell um, an A319 apart from an A320 just from just straight up looking at it but for anybody who's kind of on the kind of edge of aviation maybe you don't know the difference between an A319 and A320 uh, one of the main differences is you can tell by the emergency exits uh, A319s generally have one emergency exit over the wing uh, A320s have two taking a look at the underside as you can see we've got the stand hole with the uh, Gemini Jets logo there and the blue underbelly uh, all looks in pretty good condition and then at the rear of the aircraft here we've got the registration which is November 349 November Bravo I believe that says and then we've got the American flag there the rear door and the uh, tail here with the amazing Delta logo as many of you know I am trying to increase my Delta collection so this is kind of part of that I did say in my collection video that I would be adding um, a further three Delta aircraft to my collection in the uh, next couple of weeks uh, this is the first one we do have another two uh, Delta aircraft on the way I will reveal what they are when they get to me and I do an unboxing uh, but for now this is the first one and um, of course now I'll be able to add that next level of realism uh, into my model airport updates um, I just need a CRJ 900 uh, CRJ 700 um, of course the 737-800 and then we're pretty much set but with that being said we can move this model off to the side and move on to our second box which contains uh, four NG models which I'm very very excited for all right there we go okay and that's the box opened this is from the aircraft model store as you can probably tell by this uh, confirmation letter here and it is from the aircraft model store and then inside the box here we've got some uh, some protection here and then we can reveal the aircraft we have inside so starting off here we have the brand new NG models uh, Alaska honoring those who serve uh, 737 800 I've been after one of these models for a very long time uh, either being the 737 900 or the 800 I'm pretty glad I have this in my collection the next up we have an NG United Airlines 737 800 this is the re-release version and um, if you don't know I did initially order uh, three of these models from the original kind of July 29 uh, release uh, those models as uh, NG were kind of overwhelmed with the amount of orders they got for those uh, models I didn't actually get them I only got one American 737 from that release and that's it I didn't get any other 737s uh, so I'm glad that in the end they decided to re-release these now, I did order two of these models I'm not sure where the other one is I don't know whether uh, that's gonna come to me later um, I'm presuming this is just because of lack of demand this shows how wanted this model is um, this is the second release this is the re-release and I can only get one of these I presume that's why I don't have two um, either that or there's a complication with the order um, but there we go and then also here to conclude the uh, <laughs> unboxing we have a very very interesting model now this is interesting for a couple reasons this is my first NG A350 uh, so we're gonna take a look at the mold and also this is a fictional one we have the EasyJet a350 so for those of you who are unaware no easyjet don't have the a350 they only have a320 family aircraft in their fleet this aircraft is a concept model this was made just for fun and um, this isn't a realistic aircraft at all but it's pretty cool that ng have kind of gone down this avenue of releasing kind of these aircraft but we're going to save that one to last i think we're going to probably go through the united 737 i think to start with then we'll go the uh honoring those who serve and then we'll finish off with the easyjet a350 so as you can see ng does put a lot of uh, thoughts and effort into their box designs we've got the classic kind of a uh, united glow pattern in the background there it's a pretty cool design i have to say then we've got the uh, blue 
kind of colour on the sides. Along with that on the front we've got the uh, clip art of the aircraft with some faded United logos around the thing here. Um, I'm not sure what that's about. Joining that pattern on the front here we've got the clip art of the aircraft, the 737-800 on the front here. We've got the Boeing 737-800 titles up the top there. United down there, NG models down there on the back. It's literally the same just with all the legal information and then on the sides we've just got more information. We've got the uh, United uh, titles there with the uh, clip art on the opposite side. But opening the model out, I'm very excited about this. As I said, um, I've been wanting one of these aircraft, the NG United 737 since uh, about July 2019 when they first came out. So I'm glad I finally have one. Um, this, <laughs> this is, it's amazing to think that over these couple of years, I've actually ordered five NG 737s and only one has come by now. Of course those original 737 orders I actually converted into Gemini uh, 737 orders. I'm still going to be waiting on my second one from the re-release. I did in fact order two as I said. Um, I'm not sure why I only have one here but um, I guess we'll uh, sort that out later. But taking the model out of the cradle um, this is a very very exciting moment for me. We do indeed have the model and everything seems intact and in place. Starting off here at the front of the aircraft here we've got the classic 737-800 nose and we've got the forward landing gear here, the uh, cockpit windows there, the uh, Star Alliance logo there with the L1 door, uh, the United titles here with the grey underbelly. Um, I really like how NG do these little uh, red kind of antennas on the underside here, I don't know if you can see that there. They just make the model that little tiny bit extra detailed and they look really really good. Next here as you can see we've got the correct size um, scimitars as you can see. Um, unlike the Gemini ones which are vastly oversized. We then have the wings here which appear to be the correct kind of uh, angle. But then concluding this model at the back here we've got the registration which is uh, November 26208 I believe that says and then we've got the American flag with the um, amazing kind of United tail back here. Um, it's going to be amazing to add another one of these to my fleet. This this brings my new livery 737-800 fleet to four with the Star Alliance livery. That brings up to five and then overall it's at seven including the old liveries as well and that would be eight if my uh, second united 737 did arrive but i'm i'm still not sure where that is and like on cue we have another chinook with my uh new kind of unboxing setup being right by the window i can probably oh it's just behind that right there hang on let me try and move this camera and there's the chinook if you don't know as i said um, i do live by this kind of uh, military kind of helicopter base and i can literally see this from my window while I'm doing my unboxings and um, it's pretty cool uh, but that's a uh, RAF uh, Chinook there I'm not sure what he's doing uh, gonna take off or something I guess but there we go so it turns out as you can see in the top right hand corner the Chinook wasn't actually taking off um, he actually just landed I guess I just missed that he's just shut down his engines so uh, sadly no takeoff in this unboxing but I'll keep on doing these unboxings and I'll tell you what why don't we make it a thing every unboxing we do like a, a Chinook check-in um, and see if there's any Chinook out there and maybe one day we'll get a Chinook taking off but for now we can uh, resume to this uh, this unboxing but yeah here we have the NG models uh, Alaska Airlines 737-800 in the honoring those who serve livery now Alaska currently have a 60 one uh, 737-800s I believe. I'm not actually so sure how many uh, are painted into this livery. I would guess one. I know that this livery is painted onto the 737-800, the 737-900 and the uh, E-175. And as you can see NG have done a very good job of kind of replicating that livery onto this box. Uh, we've got Chester down there in the bottom right hand corner and then we've got the of course the stars and bars up here. For those of you who are unaware by what this livery kind of resembles, it's basically an homage to the American Armed Forces. Um, it's kind of Alaska's way of just kind of uh, tributing the American Armed Forces. But I do really like this livery. Um, it'd be so cool to see maybe some more airlines pick up on this trend of kind of tributing the Armed Forces because it's a, it's a nice thing to do and um, yeah. With that being said, we're going to move straight onto the model. We've got the clip of the aircraft in the middle here, Boeing 737-800 up the top there, Alaska Airlines registration underneath that, the NG Models logo, same thing in every box, we've got the same on the back except we've got the legal information and then we've got the clip art and the logo of the airline on the sides of the box as well. But going ahead and opening this box we have the model in there 
Taking the model out of the cradle now, we've got the plastic protection on the top there, and we have this insanely beautiful model. And here we have the model. This is a very, very nice livery. Alaska do some of the best special liveries um, in the world, in my opinion. Um, I really like this one. I really love the Mortar Love livery as well. I would love to get the A321neo in the Mortar Love livery over the 737-900. Um, I would love for um, NG to release that one. I know they have the A321neo mold, so I would love to see that one. <laughs> Starting off here at the front of the aircraft, here we've got the L1 door along with the cockpit windows and then we've got this. I'm not sure what this logo is. Um, I'm guessing it's something to do with the American Armed Forces. It's like a circle uh, with uh, five kind of golden stars inside it. Again, I'm not sure what the symbol is. So if any of you do know, feel free to leave it in the comments below. We've got the uh, uh, forward landing gear here, honoring those who serve, which is the title of this livery along with this kind of uh, light gray kind of color here at the front here and then below that we've got the Alaska Airlines titles here moving to the middle of the aircraft now we've got the two emergency exits here we've got the red borderline kind of stretching uh, up here on the fuselage uh, the blue engines there then we've got the if it'll focus the American flag kind of um, on the on the winglets there I don't know if focus there we go and um, this is kind of I, I kind of like the way they've done this it's very similar to the old uh, Virgin America winglets where they had the American flag on the winglets so it's kind of an homage I guess to the um, Virgin America uh, takeover by Alaska of course this probably more resembles the honoring those who serve kind of feature but overall it, it's kind of nice it kind of serves two purposes and then here at the rear of the aircraft we've got this uh, really nice blue I really like this blue color here we've got the registration which is November 57 I believe that's uh, Oscar Oscar or a zero, I'm not really sure. Um, Alpha Sierra with the American flag there. Uh, the rear door there and then we've got Chester up here uh, in kind of a blue kind of color scheme which is a little bit different to the regular tail. As you can see by bringing in the uh, regular livery here, um, it is slightly different. Um, it's generally the same kind of theme, it's just some different colors. It's a slightly lighter shade of blue as you can see. Uh, then the actual Chester face isn't in white like the regular livery, it's in like a really light blue a baby blue and then instead of this kind of green color we've got a very light blue so only only very small differences but differences nevertheless overall I'm a very big fan of the whole Alaska Airlines brand in fact I'll bring in the uh, other Alaska 737-800 in the regular livery in the back there I am planning on getting some more Alaska aircraft of course I'd love to get a 737-900 in the regular livery as I said I'd love to get another A321neo uh, probably the uh, Morta Love a321neo although I would kind of lean towards waiting for NG to make one rather than going for the Gemini one because a the Gemini one is very expensive and the mold it's okay the mold is okay but I, I prefer the NG one but yeah, I'm a very big fan of Alaska, a very big fan of this uh, livery, and also a very big fan of this model in general. I can't wait to add this into some airport updates. But finally, last but not least, moving on to the magnum opus of this unboxing, we have the NG A350-900 um, in the EasyJet colors. As I said at the start of this unboxing, uh, this is a very, very interesting model for a few reasons. Um, a, this is my first NG A350. Um, B, it's a brand new airline. And see it's a fictional kind of aircraft and airline combo. If you're not familiar with EasyJet, they're basically one of the largest airlines in Europe. They're a British airline. I believe they are actually now the largest airline in the UK by uh, passenger numbers. They currently operate 104 A319s, 165 A320s, um, 37 A320 Neos with another 92 on order. Then they currently operate 14 A321 Neos with a further 16 of those on order. And so the A350 isn't a realistic aircraft for EasyJet. I'm sure if they were going to get a wide body, it probably would be the A350. Just because of how loyal EasyJet have been to Airbus, um, this probably kind of makes sense. It would be kind of cool to see this. I, I doubt they'd kind of stretch their legs outside of Europe. Um, they're very refined to Europe, but it would kind of make sense on some very high demand routes inside Europe. Maybe flights like Gatwick to Amsterdam, Gatwick to Paris, Paris to Amsterdam, Milan I know is a big hub. 
Um, various other airports around Europe like that, but EasyJet operates in force. It would be very cool to see this aircraft kind of operate um, those routes instead of operating, say, four A321neos. But overall, I don't think EasyJet are gonna resort to some wide bodies at least anytime soon. The box, as you can see, has a very orange design. We've got this, it almost looks like the Etihad livery in the back there, just in orange form. Then we've got the EasyJet title in kind of a in kind of a translucent uh, design there. Then we've got the clip art in the middle here, Airbus A350-900. EasyJet, the registration, which is Golf um, A359, so A350 Golf, of course, being in the UK. Then on the back here, it's exactly the same as the front, except we've got some of this legal information with this barcode which is actually glued onto the box which is interesting and then on the sides there we've just got the EasyJet logo and the clip art of the aircraft on the uh, other side. Unboxing this aircraft now this is going to be very interesting to see how NG have kind of packaged the A350 as I said this is my first NG A350 and it's very similar to the A330 and 787. Then in here we have the uh, meat and potatoes, we have the actual model itself, we have the uh, plastic protection piece on there just to stop any kind of scratching in transit. And then in here we have the model. Okay, and okay, it is, uh, it is broken. Not a very good start, I have to say. And there's no extra piece. Uh, what? Um, we have one of the... Okay, this is a... Okay, this is gonna be a real big problem. As you can see, uh, we have the A350 here. Doesn't have either of the rear stabilizers on the back here. We have one of them in the box, which is here, but the other one, I've just looked through all of the boxes, it's not here. It is one thing to have a model come broken, it's another thing to have a model come broken and then those broken pieces aren't even in the box. For me, this comes as NG's second failure. We had a little bit of trouble with that JetBlue A321 when that came out, but this is a real, real big problem. This is like a Gemini Jets, well actually no, beyond Gemini Jets, because Gemini Jets would actually have the spare pieces in the box. Literally, it's not anywhere in this polystyrene piece, it's not in these plastic pieces back here, it's it's not in the main box, it's literally not here. I don't know what to say at this point. Of course, this is an easy fix. I can glue this in. Still a downside to NG that they've actually had a broken piece. I don't know what to do. I'm probably gonna have to send this back. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with this. I guess for now, we're just gonna have to kind of review this aircraft uh, while being broken and just kind of ignore the breakages for now. But that is my first proper bad experience with NG. Man, I hope they sort this out pretty soon because that is not good. Honestly, first things first, I have to say the nose gear does look a little bit long. Um, I don't want to put a bummer on this, but here's the uh, Gemini um, Lufthansa A350. You can see it's a lot shorter. I'm pretty sure this is more correct than this. So Gemini Jets comes out on top of this. Um, NG, I'm a little bit surprised, I have to say. The length of this forward landing gear is not terrible. I mean, I would buy this again. It's not that terrible, but it is a little bit of a downside. Um, it's not nearly as bad as, as the length of the uh, Phoenix ones, but that's kind of on the bad side, as I said. We've then got the cockpit windows at the front here with the mascara around the cockpit. The actual mold looks okay. Um, bring in the uh, Gemini Jets one again. The uh, actual nose piece, it does look a little bit off. Um, it looks a little bit too pointy at this end. The A350, I've noticed, uh, modeling companies can't seem to get it right. There is a definite difference between this Gemini Jets one and the NG one. I honestly, I, I, at, the, at this moment, I do prefer the Gemini one, uh, even disregarding the broken pieces. But we have the L1 door here, the L2 door, the EasyJet titles. This is in the EasyJet's new livery, which is has this kind of white and orange and the orange kind of slopes downwards towards the rear of the aircraft. Moving to the middle of the aircraft here, we've got the engines, which are orange there. We've got down there, we've got the uh, main landing gear, which I do have to say, um, they've done this a lot better than Gemini Jets. I feel like the Gemini Jets ones are very far apart, but these main landing gear, um, they look very, very good. Honestly, that's the only discrepancy I have with the Gemini A350 mold. Uh, the main landing gear just seems too far apart, but NG, that's one thing they have got right on this mold. 
Then finally looking at the rear of the aircraft here, we've got the registration which is Golf uh, Alpha 359. Uh, we've got the uh, Wi-Fi bubble on the back here and then we've got the EasyJet tail back here with the non-existent rear stabilizers. So yeah, overall this was a very, very interesting uh, unboxing. Uh, the Gemini one, of course it's an old Gemini model so it's very good. I really, really like this model. I can't wait to have this in updates. Same goes for these two aircraft as well. Um, I really like these models. They look really, really good. Uh, the EasyJets A350 and the NG A350 mold. I'm hoping this isn't a kind of continuous feature with the new A350 mold. Um, I have ordered, I believe, a couple more NG A350s from various other airlines. So I guess we'll have to see how they come. Uh, I'm hoping this is just like the JetBlue A321 and every other A321, or in this case, A350s that NG make, they're not like this. I'm probably gonna have to send this model back. And overall, this mold, it's not terrible. Of course, there are minor flaws like the forward landing gear, but overall, it's not terrible apart from this incident right here. But apart from that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.